On today's show, we've got details on Bama coaching contracts, money, 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 and Greg Sankey sounds off on the future of possible NCAA tournament expansion. I'll tell you why I'm not feeling this one, Greg. Locked on SEC starts right now. You are locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And what's happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along on today's show. We're going to run through uh, Alabama, give us big pay raises out and coaching contract details and much, much more. Also, like we said, Greg Sankey talking about expanding the NCAA tournament. We don't need to go down that route. And hey, we do have a little bit more clarity on the future of the college football playoff expansion. It's all about the dollars and cents. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. Shout out to every day. We're free and available. Wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. And today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right. We got to start over in Tuscaloosa as we are finding out Alabama head coaches and assistant coaches and ADs are all getting paid. On Monday, the University of Alabama System Board of Trustees met to approve several raises and contracts for folks in the Alabama Athletic Department. First up, it was first-year Alabama head football coach Kalen DeBoer, who is going to make an average of $10.8 million per year, which will rank him in the top five nationally among the highest-paid coaches in college football. Now, DeBoer got an eight-year contract that was officially approved Monday. So DeBoer will make $87 million. That's $10 million in his first year. And that contract will run through December of 2031. His compensation will increase a quarter of a million dollars each year. And it'll grow up to $11.75 million in the final year of his deal. Of course, if he does well, he's going to get these numbers increased along the way. He'll make more. If he doesn't do well, well, he won't last until 2031 at Alabama. So that's kind of the, the gist of it. I can't say him see him staying at these numbers, you know, one way or another. Either he's meeting and exceeding expectations and he's going to get more raises or uh, he'll be let go. But uh, DeBoer's contract is 90% guaranteed if he were to be fired without cause. And there is no mitigation. His buyout, if he were to leave Alabama before his contract is up, starts at $5 million this year. Then $4 million next year, $3 million, and so on and so forth. Um, again, why would he voluntarily leave Alabama unless things were going horribly wrong? Uh, but if you just look at average salary, DeBoer is fourth on that list. Clemson's Dabo Sweeney is at the top, making an average annual salary of $11.5 million. Georgia's Kirby Smart and USC's Lincoln Riley rank second on that list, making $11 million a year each. It's crazy about that is, you know, talk about like one of these things. It's not like the other. Dabo's won titles. Kirby's won titles. Lincoln Riley has not won titles yet. He is tied with Kirby for second highest paid coach in the country. Uh, Kalen DeBoer's fourth. He makes just a hair under $11 million, as we said. Texas's Steve Sarkeesian right behind him at $10.64 million. And then Florida State's Mike Norvell at $10.52 million. Of course, Sark and Norvell just got increases right around the same time DeBoer took the Alabama job. So Nick Saban retiring got a lot of people paid. For the record, Saban, he was scheduled to make $11.5 million this year before retiring. Now, it had been reported Washington was going to offer Kayla DeBoer $9.4 million to stay with the Huskies, but he's getting just a little bit more than that by making the jump to Alabama. Since DeBoer left Washington early, remember he's forced to pay that $12 million buyout Corner reports Alabama is expected to cover that expense for him. Now, also on Monday, Alabama AD Greg Byrne met with the media talking about the financial details of the contracts. Well, Greg Byrne, he's getting a new seven-year contract with his first new year beginning July 1st this coming summer. He is set to make $2.3 million a year, and the final year of that contract will pay him $2.75 million a year. According to USA Today, that makes Alabama the fifth public school whose AD is making over $2 million a year. 
The other ones in that group, two SEC schools, Texas and Tennessee, Ohio State and Texas Tech. And a quarter reports, Oklahoma and Texas A&M are very near that level. Of course, A&M just making their new hire of Trev Alberts as their new athletic director. But uh, Greg Byrne compensated very, very well. The uh, buyout on Byrne's contract states that the university would be owed $5 million through June 2027 if he were to decide to leave early. So settle in, Greg Byrne. You're not going anywhere. Uh, another salary news for Alabama football defensive coordinator Kane Womack is set to make $1.55 million this year. OC Nick Sheridan will make $1.35 million. Co-OC Jamarcus Shepard will make $1.1 million. And then uh, D-line coach Freddie, coach Freddie Roach will make a million. Strength coach David Ballou will make $950,000. And running backs coach Robert Gillespie, $850,000. Basically, most of the other Alabama assistants are going to make anywhere from five hundred to nine hundred k. Real good money if you can get your hands on it. Now, Kane Womack, like I said, is going to make one point five five million. Kevin Steele was making one point nine million as DC. Pete Golding was making one point seven three million his last year. Uh, and by comparison, Womack was making eight hundred and ten thousand as head coach at South Alabama. So nothing like doubling your salary to take a step down from head coach to defensive coordinator. Pretty good gig there. All right. In addition to Kalen DeBoer and the football coaches, Nate Oates, Alabama basketball coach Nate Oates, had his contract approved by the compensation committee on Monday. Uh, he'll make $5 million in the first year of his new deal, and that will grow to $7.55 million in the final year of his deal. His buyout will be $18 million for the first two years of that deal if he were to leave for another school. Uh, the deal extends him through March 14th of 2030. Nate Oates' contract 100% guaranteed. If fired, he would have an obligation to make a reasonable and good faith effort to pursue another head coaching job so that they wouldn't have to give him the full buyout. Uh, Oates is set to coach in a fourth straight NCAA tournament game this, or, you know, tournament this week. And like we said, Oates will owe Alabama $18 million if he were to leave in the first two years of that new deal. Uh, Greg Burden said that's the highest buyout in the nation for a college basketball coach. Buyout will fall to $10 million until 2027. But why is that important? Well, it means like schools like Kentucky, if John Calipari were to tire, or were to tire uh, they can't come and try to poach Nate Oates away. So, again, we're talking about everybody locking in. Nate Oates, lock it in. You're not going anywhere from Alabama anytime soon. All right, one other Alabama note, Jalen Milrow, junior quarterback for the Crimson Tide, coming back as one of the leaders in the SEC this year and, of course, uh, led the Tide to an SEC championship game. And news came out this past week that he has been spending a lot of this offseason working with Jordan Palmer, former National Football League quarterback, helping improve his mechanics. Of course, Palmer is a younger brother of former NFL quarterback Carson Palmer, and he's tutored a number of quarterbacks in the league, including – Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. But uh, Milrow, there's been reports that, you know, he's been getting to the facility super early. In fact, Kalen DeBoer even talking about that on a podcast this week, the Audible saying, yeah, there have been a couple days where Jalen has uh, been in there. I first got there where um, he got in right before me at about 4 a.m. every day. Jalen Milrow is in the complex. So Milrow, he was in Houston, Texas over the weekend uh, coaching a youth football camp of his own at his alma mater at Katie Thompson's High School. And our buddy Adam Winkler of KTRK caught up with Milrow and uh, sent us over a couple minutes of this interview, uh, him catching up with Jalen Milrow to bring to you. Here was uh, KTRK with Jalen Milrow. Just a couple years ago, you were uh, you you were here tossing it around with the band playing. Now you got your name on the camper <laughs> shirt. How neat is this to come back and do a camp at home? No, it's awesome um, to have the opportunity to host this camp. Um, I want to thank everyone that was a part of this camp. Um, but it's it's a dream come true. Cause I remember when I was younger, um, I told my parents, I said, "Hey, you know, when I grow up, I have the opportunity to do so. I want to host my own camp. So, you know, it's a true blessing to have this camp." And then the biggest thing, too, is to have the opportunity um, to have everybody smiling, having fun. So this is a cool opportunity. Man, I see some middle schoolers out here. Like, their experience as a college athlete is going to be so much different than what you thought yours was going to yeah. be. I realize there's a ton of advice you can give them, but what are some of the things that you're saying? Because, I mean, it's so much more than football now that you guys have to handle. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest thing um, 
that my biggest advice for anybody that's going and heading into college or inspired to go to college is trust the process and then also to have the right supporting um, system around you because um, those are those are the people that's going to uplift you because um, through the process it's not going to be easy and it's a hard process and um, my biggest advice is to have the right support system because um, that's what I take pride in is the people that surround me because they uplift me on an everyday basis you know um, through this journey so um, I think that's my biggest advice and also to have fun you know you went to the next level for a purpose and I always um, keep that in mind so I think that's the biggest thing how, how are things going with you man I know we, we got to talk to you at the at the, the, the arch the card show yeah right after coach Saban leaves you I mean but we know you're coming back like how are things with yeah. you we know the expectations never changed absolutely so. yeah I'm in good hands with the with the, uh, the everyone that's that's here on uh, there at campus um, with coach DeBoer and, and the whole system and, and the whole um, coaching staff um, so I'm excited um, for everyone that's there because at the end of the day the standard is the standard nothing's changing about that and we have a lot of good good, good dudes on the, on the team um, we have a good locker room and with a lot of a lot of leaders stepping up so um, I'm super excited for what's ahead and uh, we're in uh, we're going when I get back we're going to be on uh, day four of spring ball so uh, I'm excited because uh, everything's rolling the right way my final question for you one of the people I saw retweet your camp was LJ Cryer uh, I realize you guys are from different Katie yeah. schools, but do you get to follow him and, uh, and see Absolutely. what he and his Cougs are doing? Absolutely. Since he got since he got to college, once he once he went to Baylor, and now um, at Houston, I've been following his whole journey. That's my boy. So um, I'm following his whole process. Um, that's my guy. So throughout the whole journey, that's what I'm gonna be following LJ. So just like yesterday, I watched him the game yesterday. Watched him ball out. So <laughs> so I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm gonna always root for LJ. That's my boy. Uh, we're family, so I'm always gonna root for him. So it'll be easier if the Tide and the Cougs are in separate sides of the bracket, right? Oh, it'll absolutely. Be for you. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> hey, man, thanks for doing this. Thank, Thank you for the time. Thank appreciate you for coming you. home. That again, uh, Jalen Milrow, and appreciate uh, our buddy Adam Winkler of KTRK getting that uh, couple minutes there with Jalen Milrow and uh, had a successful camp. And yeah, uh, in case you're wondering, there, Alabama, of course, is in the tournament, but LJ Cryer, a high school friend of Jalen Milrow, went to uh, very close high schools there in the Houston area. And uh, LJ Cryer, big fan of Jalen Milrow, and he's leading the number one Houston Cougars into the tournament. So uh, worth keeping an eye on that. All right, more to come here on Locked on SEC, including uh, some Greg Sankey comments. Look, normally we're on the side of Greg Sankey, not on the side with him on this. We're going to talk about that coming up here in just a second right here on Locked on SEC. First, I want to remind you guys, this episode presented to you by our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by Nissan. Each week, we are picking one team that stands out, a team that has pushed it further than the rest. And just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. We talked about the Tennessee Volunteers. How about the Auburn Tigers? They can be described as a pathfinder. They have been thrilling to watch. They have created a lane for themselves, claiming the uh, top spot in the uh, SEC as they won the SEC uh, tournament over the weekend, knocked off the Florida Gators in the SEC tournament championship and set to run, make a run in the NCAA tournament as a four seed. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, you can call them a Pathfinder. You can go check out the Nissan Pathfinder or the Nissan Rogue or the Nissan Armada. You can go find your next big adventure over at NissanUSA.com. That's where you can check out all the great new rides and features and all the great stuff they got to offer there with all the new SUVs there at Nissan. Again, that website, again, is NissanUSA.com. Go choose your next adventure. This episode also presented to you by our friends over at Fire TV. Fire TV, your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV's got Amazing viewing experiences of smart smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, a college basketball tournament, you're going to want to make sure you have a Fire TV. And uh, they recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. And that includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro sports leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date in the latest world of sports from college hoops to NBA, MLB, and lots more. Go check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked them out yet, trust me on this. You should go learn more at amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. That's amazon.com slash locked on fire TV. Here, 
Locked On SEC. Thank you guys for making us your first listen every day. Shout out to every dayers. Keep coming back and checking us out each and every day. Of course, it is that time of year with the uh, college hoops action getting underway. And um, I want to remind you guys, the Locked On College Basketball Bracket Breakdown Show is now available on the Locked On College Basketball Podcast. Andy Patton and Isaac Shade. We'll break down their brackets, discuss everything you need to know to fo- uh, fill out a winning bracket and prepare for this year's tournament. Find the Locked On Bracket Breakdown now on the college, Locked On College Basketball Podcast, wherever you find your podcast. All right, speaking of the tournament, Greg Sankey talking uh, publicly this week about, you know, he kind of hinted a couple weeks ago about, oh, maybe we should expand the NCAA tournament. And I think we all kind of curled our noses up at that saying, wait, what? Like, Okay, we're we're on board with the college football expansion, playoff expansion, all this kind of stuff. But NCAA tournament, like we already went from 64 to 68 a couple of years ago. And so Greg Sankey, look, continues to to call for a review of the NCAA tournament and insists, you know, there could be a healthy dialogue there. But Sankey, um, not many people are on board with his ideas. We all kind of love March Madness as is. And Pete Thamel of ESPN sat down with Greg Sankey as he uh, refers to him a, an expansion bull, uh, basically like a, a bull in a china shop now when it comes to expansion talk. But uh, Sankey said nothing remains static when it comes to Division One athletics. He pointed to deep runs in the NCAA tournament from lower-seeded teams out of power conferences as a need to, quote, think about the dynamics about the NCAA tournament. He said that just tells you the bandwidth inside the top 50 is highly competitive and we are giving away highly competitive opportunities for automatic qualifiers from smaller leagues. And I think that pressure is going to rise as we have more competitive basketball leagues at the top end because of expansion. Now, those comments set off a firestorm for a lot of people saying, look, one of the best parts of March Madness is the Cinderella's. Nobody cares about the eighth best team from the SEC making a run when you have, you know, the Florida Gulf Coast and the, I don't know, Sam Houston State or something like what well, I don't know. We're just thinking of a school that maybe could make a, a tournament run. I mean, FAU from last year was a was a fun team that isn't typically in the tournament. But um, the Cinderellas are the ones that everybody likes to uh, likes to hop on with. Well, uh, Sankey also did an interview with Kyle Tucker at the Athletic recently and said it was quote an overread to infer that he wants an NCAA tournament comprised of only power conferences. Sankey did reiterate a need to, quote, continue to adapt due to the increasing volume of Division I teams up to 362 this season. Uh, Conducting a review of the NCAA tournament and potential expansion should be a healthy conversation, Greg Sankey said. And look, I get it, right? The SEC is getting bigger. We're going from 14 to 16 teams with two really big brands like Texas and Oklahoma, who, by the way, are usually typically in the NCAA tournament on the regular uh, Oklahoma was just avoided making it this year, but Texas is in Texas made it last year. And uh, both those teams are traditionally in there as big 12 teams. And yes, the SEC got a record eight teams into the tournament this year, but that's not going to happen every year. And so it, it becomes a numbers game. You're adding more teams. That means less of your conference is going to make the big dance. And that's just the reality of it. Uh, Greg Sankey went on to say there is a desire to respect the great Cinderella stories of March Madness while admitting there should be no time pressure or expectation among teams within the review of the entire situation. Uh, Florida Athletic Director Scott Strickland was quoted in Pete Thamel's story saying the current NCAA tournament is, quote, too much of a public trust for us to blow this thing up. He said he also envisioned a tournament that is still inclusive, even if there is a new model for college sports down the road. And this is what's so interesting is if, you know, the SEC and Big Ten branch off from the college football world to create their own thing and say, well, we're just going to be a power two and we're all going to play each other for a title. Uh, can this world still exist where everybody still makes the NCAA tournament? You know what I mean? Without the SEC and Big 12 or Big Ten saying, oh, we, we, we're going to go play our own tournament in basketball, too. Uh, but it's currently constructed. I think almost everybody kind of says, look, the 68 teams is is fine. I don't think we need to expand much more. 
Um, you know, there's always teams on the bubble, and I think we can kind of agree when we start looking at those teams and they're on the bubble and their resumes. We're talking about teams with 11, 12, 13 losses, teams that finish maybe sub 500 in their conferences. And look at the two SEC teams that just snuck in this year Texas AM and Mississippi State both got into the tournament. But I mean, we, would we have been shocked? If either had been left out, the Aggies finished nine and nine in the conference, and the Bulldogs finished eight and ten. A couple other thoughts here: uh, Dan Walken uh, chiming in on social media, saying Greg Sankey is letting the mask slip off a little more. His quote from Pete Thamel's well-done story on the future of the NCAA tournament tells you exactly what he wants to do with the tournament. He will destroy college athletics if they let him. Sam Vecini also chiming in. He said, hard to overemphasize how moronic Greg Sankey has been about the NCAA tournament. The only event with a 100% approval rating among fans, basically saying, hey, everyone loves this thing. Let's screw around with it because the 50th, 50th best team in the country isn't getting tourney units. Look, I think this is one that Sankey does need to leave alone, but I can understand his frustration here. And let me explain why. Men's college basketball is basically the one sport that the SEC does not historically dominate. I mean, you go look at all the other sports. Track and field, football championships, women's basketball, baseball. I mean, look, the baseball champions is the last, like, four. Been Vandy, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, LSU. Uh, LSU women just won the college basketball championship. Don Staley in South Carolina have won a, a bunch. They're, they're probably going to win again this year. Um, they dominate every other sport. Georgia with the two-peat, it's going for a three-peat. It was weird. This was the first year we didn't have an SEC team playing in the, in the national championship. But men's college basketball, not so much. So maybe Greg Sankey is just trying to find a, a, quick, a clearer path, I should say, for the SEC to win more titles there. For what it's worth, the SEC has not won a championship in men's college basketball since John, Peller, John Calipari's crew in 2012, led by Anthony Davis. Prior to that, you got to go back to the two Florida groups under Billy Donovan in 06 and 07. And before that, you got to go back to Kentucky in 96 and 98. I mean, there have just not been many. So that's the only thing I can think of here where Greg Sankey is saying, look, we need a clearer path for the SEC men's basketball to have an impact and win more championships in the NSA tournament. All right, still more to come. On Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. We'll switch over to the football side. That's coming your way in just a second. The first this episode presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Say goodbye to those busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it is time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers are going to get those $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins, that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who is going to win it all. Just go visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Again, that is FanDuel.com slash locked on. Take advantage. Uh, get that first $5 bet in. And if it wins, you, can, uh, you will get $200 in bonus bets by using uh, that code fanduel.com slash locked on. Go get in on the action today. All right, as we wrap up here, locked on SEC. I uh, did want to touch on some news that came on Friday afternoon, so we hadn't done a show since then. Yesterday's show was uh, – Recap of Missouri spring game and obviously talking about the NCAA tournament and all that kind of stuff. But uh, in case you missed the news, uh, Friday afternoon, all nine FBS conferences and Notre Dame agreed to the next college football playoff contract, which will begin in 2026 and bring the sports postseason much closer to that 14-team field that we are expected to reach. The uh, memorandum of understanding guaranteed that the field will have at least 12 in 2026 and beyond, but sources indicate that there was a strong push to get to that 14 team field. Uh, sources caution that the exact format is not finalized in the Big Ten. The SEC will have the bulk of control over calling the shots. 
but others will be protected by parameters that have been put in place. Bill Hancock, the CFP executive director, said anything else regarding format moving forward after this is still to be determined. Now, the commissioners and Notre Dame agreed that the conference champions from the ACC, Big Ten, SEC, and Big 12 and the highest ranked group of five champion will all earn playoff berths and Notre Dame will have protections that will survive regardless of the ultimate format. But with those guarantees, the other commissioners and Notre Dame leadership surrendered the bulk of their control over the format to the SEC and Big Ten as, quote, part of the give and take. So the new CFP contract will go hand in hand with its expected new con TV contract with ESPN to start in 2026. ESPN poised to spend an average of nearly $1.3 billion on the playoff for six seasons. But starting in 2026, the new six-year agreement will codify that further financial separation of the expanded Big Ten and SEC from everybody else. So basically, the financial distribution was going to look radically different. On an annual basis, the Big Ten and SEC schools will each make more than $21 million, up from the nearly $5.5 million that schools in the Power Five are currently being paid. Uh, the ACC schools will get $13 million annually. Big 12 will get... Uh, more than 12 million each, and Notre Dame expect to get more than 12 million as well. Uh, there will no longer be a participation bonus for any of the other leagues. The group of five schools' annual payments will increase to just under 1.8 million from the current 1.5 million. So think about that in increase. Like the Big Ten and SEC schools were getting 5.5 million, that's jumping up to 21 million. Whereas a group of five school, your raise goes from 1.5 to 1.8 million. Not all conferences are created equal, but because the uh, Big Ten and SEC will have a combined 34 teams and the most CFP representatives, they also have, have had the most leverage in all these discussions. SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey, who met with the conference presidents and chancellors uh, this past week, said his conference has delivered 40% of the teams in the playoff, yet have not gotten 40% of the payout. And I agree with that. I mean, that's it, it makes a lot of sense to say if we're putting in almost half of the teams into the playoff every year. We're not getting anywhere near close to half the revenues. Something needs to be changed. So the CFP will use a 12-team format this year and next year. And then the format for the next two years will uh, feature five automatic qualifiers from the five highest-ranked conference champions and seven at-large bids. But there is expected to be that ongoing discussion about the format and what is expected to be a 14-team playoff come 2000. 26. So, look, I know a lot of talk of the financials can be very boring and all that, but it is worth noting, you know, we're an SEC podcast and the financials implicated here of what the SEC is going to be making is just bar none way higher than every other uh, conference. And, you know, it's worth noting that little alliance that the SEC and Big Ten created is paying off well for them. They are uh, controlling college football as we know it. Um, with that decision so far. So we'll see what more comes of that, but just wanted to pass that along. And that had been agreed to uh, higher rep shares and all that. And we're moving more towards that 14 team playoff coming in 2026. Hey, thank you guys for making locked on sec. Your first listen every day. Shout out to every dayers. Keep coming back. Check us out tomorrow on the show for your second. Listen, locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. It is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with our local experts. So, for your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel. I'm Chris Gordy. It's been Locked On SEC. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.